ever thought about making a Lego robot that plays tic-tac-toe and always wins? In this video I'll show you how I created an unbeatable Lego robot. With over 20 years of experience in engineering and Lego design, I'll share the expert strategies I daily use to tackle complex problems. Let's review the rules of this game now. You draw a grid on paper, like this, then you mark in turns O's and X's on the grid and the first to align three marks horizontally, vertically or diagonally wins. Now that you know the basic rules, imagine playing against a robot. The challenge is to find a way for both you and the robot to communicate your moves. In my previous projects, like the LEGO Mindstorm NXT and EV3 tic-tac-toe robots, I used LEGO balls known as Zamor Spheres, but they were a bit tricky due to their size. The ideal choice are the balls used for the LEGO grid ball contraption, which are just the right size, 14mm in diameter. Originally these were LEGO soccer or basket balls, now rare and pricey, but don't worry, you can find equivalent balls easily and affordably on Amazon. Check the description for more details. And now that we've figured out how to interact with our tic-tac-toe robot using LEGO balls, let's dive in. What kind of LEGO Robotics Toolkit could we use? Well, this is important to know, as it will determine the pieces available and the motors and sensor we could use to bring our robot to life. There are different kits out there. There's the Spike Prime kit, designed for education, but cost a whopping $500. And then there was the excellent LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor set, but it was retired way too early. Poof, gone. What's left? Well, the most popular and friendly kit is the LEGO Boost Creative Toolbox. It includes everything we need. A move hub with two built-in motors, an extra motor and a color distance sensor. Plus, you can program it with icons, blocks and even in Python if you want to squeeze out all of its potential. And the best part, it's way cheaper than the other kits, making it a perfect choice for our project. Although this kit is discontinued as well, it's still very popular. Many of my subscribers already have it and got all my original models to build. If you don't have one, you can still get a used set for cheap. So, let's grab our LEGO Boost kit and get ready to design our amazing tic-tac-toe robot. Let's first design the board. Let's try dropping a ball by hand. Hmm, it rolls everywhere. Let's add some borders to each cell. Perfect. And now let's design a simple mechanism that allows our robot to drop a ball at a time. Stacking bricks sometimes is not enough. In that case, the motor could self-detach from the chute if the ball dropping mechanism gets stuck. So let's secure it there with some brackets with stud on the side, and then everything is braced with a plate. This technique is called snot because it uses knot elements, which mean stud knot on top. Let's cover the ball magazine, but leave a hole at the top to refill it. Five balls are enough for the robot to play an entire game. Now let's try dropping a ball. Ha, it's jumping everywhere. The ejector must have a sort of funnel to prevent the ball from jumping away. We could place the sensor and the ball dropper together and move the scanner dropper head across the board, but how? I can think of many ways of doing it, each using the remaining two motors. The arm slides back and forth like so, and the ball rotates. Or the board moves along two axes, up, down, left and right, and the arm stays still. Well, the easiest and more robust way to make this with the parts included in the LEGO Boost set is this one. The board rotates and the arm swings across the board. This is the same technique used in the mechanical hard drive and old-fashioned record players. So now let's put everything together. After adding this dish to all the balls for the player, the robot is complete. Let's test it manually. Well, this is quite hard to turn. But this is very soft, on the other hand, so I think I'll use this to let the user select the level of difficulty of the game. Now that the robot hardware is ready, we'll move to designing the logic for this machine. It's just a nice paperweight until we give it a brain. Before programming any robot, it's always a good habit to write down what it should do in natural language, as you would speak to a friend. And I know, I know, that 99% of your body will want to skip this part because you think it's boring, but do a favor to yourself and listen, because you learn the unbeatable strategy to play tic-tac-toe. And here's how the robot brain will work. Step 1. Can I win now? First, the robot looks around the board, like a detective. Hmm, it says, are there two of my marks in a row or a column or diagonal with an empty space left? If the answer is yes, the robot thinks, haha, I just need to place my next mark there and I win. 
it always checks this first because winning against humans is its primary goal, right? Step two, uh oh, better block the player. If the robot can't win immediately, it switches to defense mode. Wait a second, it says, does the player already have two marks in a row with an empty spot left? If so, the robot quickly places its mark there to block the player from winning. Step three, the power of the center. Next, the robot asks, is the middle square free? Why the robot wants to play center? Well, because from there it can control the board and have more chances to win. So if no one has taken it yet, the robot claims that space. Step four, danger detection in hard mode. Now things get really smart. In hard mode, the robot doesn't just look at the current move, it tries to see into the future. It imagines what it might happen three moves ahead and thinks, ah, uh -uh, those ball sprays there in opposite corners could cause trouble later. I better play on this edge now. But if it doesn't find any risky situation, it places its mark on a corner to keep control of the game. By thinking step by step like this, the robot becomes a tic-tac-toe champion. And even if you try to outsmart it, good luck, it's always ready to block your sneaky moves. And now, let's call all this logic into our genius LEGO robot. But how to do that? Here's the tricky part. LEGO Boost or LEGO Powered Up apps make it super hard to program this kind of complex logic. I'd have to drag hundreds of little graphical blocks just to make one move. And if I wanted to share the code with you? Nope. I can't. The apps don't let you export or copy anything. I would have to take a truckload of screenshots for you to reproduce the program. Make one mistake and bam, the robot won't work. And that's why I've programmed the whole thing for you using Python, a powerful programming language that lets robots follow complex instructions without the block building headache. This is possible thanks to Pybricks, an alternative firmware for your LEGO Boost hub that lets you program your robots in MicroPython and even store the program on the hub itself. Squeezing all the genius AI into the small memory of the hub was a real challenge. I even had to write from scratch an algorithm to generate random numbers. But don't worry, you don't even have to learn Python to make this work. I give you my custom program ready to be loaded onto your robot and the detail building instructions to get started. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to build it. Before we finally see this robot in action, let me tell you the secret about how you should approach such large problem and solve it. The big picture was, let's make a Lego robot that plays tic-tac-toe and never loses a game. I took the big problem and divided it into small sub-problems, for example, designing the mechanism to eject one ball at a time, designing the mechanism to scan the board, program the win logic and so on. And then I put everything together. This approach of dividing a large problem that at first sight seems impossible into small sub-problems and then conquering it by solving each of those smaller problems is called top-down. We go from the big picture to the details that compose it. Hands down, that's one of my most precious secret weapons to LEGO design and engineering in general. And finally, let's see how it works. You can select the level you want to play each time you start the program by turning the board clockwise. Easy blinks green, medium blinks yellow and hard blinks red. And then you can show a finger to the sensor to begin the game. Human players always play first, to give you some advantage. In easy mode the robot just play randomly and beating it won't be that hard. Let's try. Haha, <laughs> you're sad, huh? You see, easy victory. Now let's place the ball back and try again in medium mode.
But how about in hard mode? Well, in hard mode the robot will apply the perfect strategy and the best we can do is ending up in a dive. We had fun today, but if you really want to start creating technology and learn how to program Lego Boost robots that do what you want, watch the next video.